Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens and Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, what North Dakota-related topics would you be interested in for driving videos? Now, give me some ideas down in the comments. So let's take a look at the pens. All right, so I think I got a little brand heavy this week. I I don't know, you're going to have to tell me, maybe I'm out of line here, but I think I'm a little heavy toward one brand this week, and it wasn't even planned, so I'm going to make an effort next week to get into more brands. So, let's take a look. So first, I have the Aurora 88. This is a special edition. I have the Parker 51, not the new one, this is the original. I have a Parker Dual Fold Economy. I have a Parker... <laughs> Slimline Dual Fold Junior. I have a Parker Challenger. I have a Parker Slim Fold. A Parker Ellipse. Parker Dual Fold International. Parker Jotter, which seems kind of lost amongst this illustrious company. <laughs> and finally, a Platinum Izumo. So let's see how they write. As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in this Cognitive Surplus Notebook. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, last week I did put the wrong date. Don't know where the two came from. So my first pen up this week is a Parker... I'm sorry... <laughs> One of the few that's not a Parker, my Aurora 88. This is a special edition. One of the things I enjoyed about it is it has this interesting flex nib. Uh, not a vintage 88. I love the vintage 88, but kind of fun. And you're also going to notice me experimenting a little this week and maybe next couple of weeks with uh, lighting just to try to show the pens better. So I, one thing I discovered last week is move the notebook out of the way when I show the pen. So the Aurora 88 has a flex nib. And i got to look real quick what the ink is called. Uh, the ink is Hiroshizuku. Kind of matches the mood of the weather this week. Kurisami. Or Kirisami. Sorry. K-I-R-I-S-A-M-E. -E. Uh, we've had some very cold weather, like uh, well below zero. And, you know, I say finally because maybe it's finally going to feel like winter for a while, although we do not have a lot of snow cover to go with it. So, uh, that's a little disappointing, but anyway, at least we have some cold. That always helps it feel like winter. It helps my furnace run a lot during the winter, which you can hear the furnace running right now, but hey, this set is better than what I used to do when I filmed in the basement because... Here we only hear the vents, we don't hear the furnace going, so I can actually talk over this. My next pen is a vintage Parker 51. Uh, I think that's fun because uh, Parker has just released a modern version of the 51, and it is a, quite a different beast from this pen. I don't know yet if I... Oops. I don't know yet if I'll be buying any of the a copy of the new version. I might be interested, but uh, at the moment not very. I'm just kind of waiting for uh, to hear what other people think of it. So Parker 51. I'm trying to remember what the ink is. <laughs> Parker Quink Blue Black. One of their nice colors. So 
So it looks like the uh, modern Parker 51, oops, blue black. The modern one doesn't have all the innovations that this one does. It doesn't have the ink collector. It doesn't have, well, anyway, a lot of the things. It's more of a, I have been hearing, although I don't know this firsthand, it's more of a jotter where they just extend the plastic over the nib. Don't know. But again, I'm going to wait for a few more reports on the pen before I, before I decide if I want to buy one or not. I want to support Parker, but at the same time, if they're not producing something worth supporting, then why support them? And I'll just be honest, this is probably heresy, but, uh, okay, can I say this? I've never been a huge fan of the Parker 51. I have one to have my collection complete, but it's not a pen that particularly thrills me. My next pen is a, actually one I purchased from Pierre Gustafson of the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. This is a, this is a Parker Dual Fold Economy Edition. Kind of one of the last hurrahs before they said, oh, let's just close down the line. And they eventually brought it back, but you know, quite a lot later. You know, for an economy pen, there is a little bit of an ink window here, although you probably can't see it. Anyway, it's right under the thread, so it's reddish. Um, but the other interesting thing on an economy pen, because it's vintage, of course, it still has a gold nib. So this is a Parker Economy Dual Fold. has a very fine nib, although uh, not written on the nib as such. <clears throat> the ink in it is uh, vintage friendly. Uh, this is Califolio Violet. I wanted to use the Pelican Violet, but I couldn't find my bottle, so uh, that's okay. I also like Califolio, and I don't think I've used much Califolio ink since I got on my kick where I was, I'm darn well going to try and use up my Orochizuku inks. Uh, one interesting thing that this ink does on the paper is it does have a bit of a color change. It goes from a more reddish kind of violet to a more uh, bluish kind of violet, and I... It's not iron gall or anything, but I always think that's interesting. The next pen is a Parker Dual Fold Slimline Junior. has a flat finials. I think the finish is very attractive, although this part has been stained by the off-gassing from the latex sack, whereas the cap has not been stained. And some fading on the ebonite finial there and I don't know some melting and maybe some munching on the other finial <laughs> since I seem to be following a Parker theme I put some Parker ink in this one this is Parker slimline dual fold junior And the ink in it is Parker Quink Green. So, uh, I don't know, I, uh, I've mentioned this before. I wish Parker would bring some of these colors back. But uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, is there really a visionary in the Parker Pen Company right now? I like their modern pens. I've had good luck with them, although uh, I'll talk toward the end about a gentleman I had a conversation with about one of their modern pens. But is there really any innovation going on over there at the company? You know, anything to, any gambles or risks saying, hey, let's make sure this company survives into the future. Um, the, I'm sorry, the... Uh, reissue of the Parker 51 is not that. Um, 
I, I thought the Fifth Avenue was an interesting attempt, but uh, doomed to failure. Because if you like fountain pens, that you wouldn't be interested. And if you don't like fountain pens, why would you try it? And it turned out this revolution in writing wasn't anything special. So I've never even bought one. Okay, my next pen, Challenger here, is a Parker Challenger. Uh, I, I kind of like the finish on this one. I think it's very attractive. And it's another one that has a bit of an ink window here. I'm trying to hold it in a happy place where you can sort of see it. There you go, sort of. And then another one that has a gold nib. I couldn't remember how this one wrote when I inked it up, so... Uh, you know, was it the best choice for this ink? I don't know, but I got a lot of comments on this ink, so I've been wanting to put it into another pen real soon. So this happened to be what I inked up, but I'm thinking now I have a Lamy 80 that might have been a better choice, so maybe. Uh, when I first started writing with this, I could tell the ink was kind of washing out something that was in the feed. You know, I did clean this very well, I thought, but... Uh, Apparently not completely. Uh, the good thing with this is it does seem to have pushed it out. I'm back to kind of the more normal color. So this is Lamy Mango. Last seen in my Stipula Etruria, which uh, has that god-awful T-Flex nib. Sorry, T-Flex! It's like a superpower for Southerners or something. I don't know why I put the accent onto it in addition to the emphasis. But anyway, this is Lamy Mango, which I think is a uh, sort of matches, but not really the color of the fruit. Um, I think it would be fun to grow mangoes, but uh, not feasible anywhere I'm ever likely to live. Because, uh, like I said last week, snow is uh, an important piece of that. And we're not getting it here in North Dakota, so where else do I go? My next pen is this Parker Slim Fold, which is, a, I suppose, a predecessor, or not a predecessor, a, a derivation of the dual fold. Missing one finial, but, you know, fine, uh, who cares, it writes well. And then it has a breather hole there. The nib in it, nice gold nib, don't know its nib size, has a 5 written on it, but uh, you know, is it a fine, medium, or what, I, I don't know, but I do know in general the Parkers I've owned seem to write on the broad side, but anyway, this is a Parker Slim Fold, I've corrected some student work lately, and guess what? I have not used this ink or this pen. I, uh, if you follow Fountain Pen Network or probably Fountain Pen Geeks, um, every so often you can be guaranteed a nice rip-roaring discussion over whether to use red ink to grade student papers and, uh, and whether that's harmful or, oh, I use the most blood red ink I can find. And, uh, in the end... You know, what's the purpose of using the red ink? Well, you want something that stands out on the student work. Okay. What if the red ink gets in the way of the point of correcting their work? So, uh, you know, it's always more complicated than that. I am going to use red ink and they're just going to have to toughen up and take it. It's more complicated than that. I, I know it seems silly, but apparently to some students, red ink is just makes it all worse. So, uh, you know, do you have to use red ink? Why not use something else that stands out maybe in a different way? So, uh, anyway, I don't correct with red ink. Um, I, okay, I guess once in a while I've corrected with uh, Noodler's Black Swan and English Rose, but, uh, yeah. Now, I will say, looking at this red ink, to go back to the writing sample, it's kind of dark. In fact, that's one thing I noticed with it, writing on a school paper especially, it got very dark. So, I don't know if it was originally like that, but it 
I like it. I like it much better than a lot of reds. It's grown on me as I've been writing with it. So, uh, glad I got that vintage bottle. What vintage bottle? Hey, while I reached around for the vintage bottle, I found out, I found my bottle of Pelican Violet, and I would swear I opened that drawer and looked, and it wasn't there, but it was. All right, so this vintage bottle, this, by the way, is in Macedonian, and it just identifies the company that imports for Parker into Macedonia. But anyway, vintage bottle of Parker Red. Woohoo. I hear my neighbor out shoveling snow again. Um, not sure which neighbor. I could go look, but it doesn't sound as close, so it's probably my next door neighbor this time. Was one I was inspired by my lighting experiments last week. This is a Parker Duofold International. Has this beautiful, beautiful checked finish. Hey, Parker! You think you could bring back something like this, maybe in a new color, some sort of special edition? I think that looks pretty swell. Uh, how about we do an orange pen? Maybe we'll offer it in blue. Alrighty. And the, the nibs, I, uh, I've heard Parker nibs are inconsistent. I don't know. I've had good luck with them, but, you know, personal experience there. Parker Dual Fold. I was told that this was too dark of an ink for this vibrant pen, and probably true. But I do like the ink. Parker Dual Fold International, medium nib. And the ink in it is Ferris Wheel Press. buttered popcorn um, I think it's a very old butter it's maybe been heated for too long but uh, it's still a very nice color and yeah it doesn't exactly match the vibrant pen but uh, actually maybe the mango would have matched it better but you know the truly brilliant yellows are kind of uh, pale and hard to read. My next pen, second to last, is my envelope writing pen for now. Parker Jotter. I, uh, not a big fan of this pen for long writing sessions, but for writing envelopes, sure, why not? And I like slim vintage pens, so uh, why I don't like this pen, I don't know. I should mention some of what I've read about the new 51 is that it actually uses this nib, which would be a narrow nib, as uh, you know the nib for the new 51. Don't know if that's true or not, but I have read that. So this is a medium nib, and the ink in it is platinum. Carbon black, which is a good one for envelopes. I'll be honest, it's not a particular favorite of mine for uh, writing sessions. It's just, uh, you know, I don't mind a pale or black. I, I actually don't mind Parker black or Pelican black or Lamy black. But something about this black just is off to me. And then there's the maintenance factor. You know, this is a, a nano ink, so it has to be cleaned out of the pen more often. Because heaven help you if it, if it gets hardened into the pen. And yeah, I'm just not a particular fan of it. But for envelopes, awesome. Because uh, we don't want the ink to fade on those, obviously. Okay, my last pen is this beautiful, beautiful Platinum Izumo. And yeah, I experimented a little with the light last week trying to show this off. And part of it is exposure. You know, when I put a light background behind these pens, 
they are a lot darker because uh, the camera I use to film these vi these uh, writing samples does auto exposure and I just have not been able to correct for that. I have been able to set some manual settings, but not enough. But the important thing is, um, I think I've found a trick between changing the lighting around and doing this. Uh, yeah, can you see how beautiful that is? And, you know, you don't buy a pen like this because it makes good sense. You buy a pen like this because it's a work of art. And look at the layers on those clouds. So I'm looking forward to... Uh, the pen is supposed to age some and change in appearance over time, so I'm curious what that's going to look like. we got a cloud here where in... Uh, there we go. Rose tinted glasses. Green cloud that looks kind of like a dragon. And an orange cloud that... I don't know what does that look like. But anyway, I uh, just kind of enjoy this pen. And it would all mean absolutely nothing because I don't buy pens just because they're pretty. Although, you know, it helps. But... You know, I, I buy plenty of vintage slim black pens, but then it has this beautiful platinum president nib, coarse nib, which Dan Smith was kind enough to grind to a cursive italic. Uh-oh. It may be out of ink. <laughs> I will admit, I uh, this pen runs through ink really quickly. All right. It is almost empty. I was able to find more ink in it, but yeah, it's a combination of uh, several things. The dry winter and uh, the fact that it's almost empty. So if I'm writing with this pen next week, I'll be surprised because I have vowed it's going to get washed out between uses rather than continuously being refilled. Uh, because I do have other nice pens that I'd like to use from time to time. So this is a Platinum Izuma with a, whoops, forgot the rest of that, with a coarse cursive italic nib. And the ink in it is Kyona Oto. Sakura Nazumi. Of course, part of the fun of a cursive italic nib is that they are much broader than they are. I don't know what I'm looking for there, but the, you know, definitely very broad in one direction when it's vertical strokes and very narrow when it's uh, um, horizontal strokes. So those are the pens that I've been using this week. Uh, I have a I have two three-day weekends coming up really soon, so I'm hoping to get ahead some more on some, uh, just some more first impressions and a couple of reviews, because it turns out I have some more pens that I've used, but haven't actually reviewed. And I really need to get back into revisiting old pens. Uh, also looking forward to doing some videos on, uh, maybe editing the collection and, uh, I've had some requests for driving videos, so I want to get back into those soon, too. But I'll just show you a couple pens I didn't show you before that I want to uh, discuss. This is a review that'll be... Well, let's get the notebook out of the way, because I just talked about how it exposes better without it. This is a review I'll be doing. I've uh, done this before. I've just never done a video on it. But this is a Bulgarian pen. You know, maybe not, okay, maybe not the most amazing pen, but uh, 
surprisingly nice. Uh, I have uh, this beauty, which I can't remember if I showed you before or not. But what's interesting is glass nib. And let's see, one or two others. This one is a... Uh, I think this one will be a first impression. This is a Hungarian Pax pen. Kind of takes after the Parker 45, don't you think? And let's see. I've uh, done a first impression, or sorry, I've had this one on pens in use long, long ago. Not one of my more wonderful pens, but it illustrates perfectly something. Uh, so I'm going to discuss it right now. Even though you're not, well, I guess you're looking at me right now. But uh, I had a conversation on Instagram and the private messages with a gentleman, so I won't identify, but he knows who he is, uh, about his Parker IMs, and he complained that they dry out. And so uh, I've never owned a Parker IM, so I was like, uh, duh, so I had to look it all up, but I, uh, this Parker, this Tucker Sharp, oops, that's upside down. Tucker Sharp perfectly illustrates part of the problem with the IM as far as I could find. One of the big problems with this Tucker Sharp, I don't know if you can tell. There. Uh, shaking it you can't tell on video, but a cap should not have that much play. And it's a slip cap just like the Parker IM. Very smooth medium. I'm sorry. The name on that makes me giggle. And then no cap lining either. Or no inner cap, I should say, which you can't tell with this lighting. Could you tell? Nope. Okay. Let's see what happens if I hold it near the microphone and rattle it. So we'll see if that gets picked up by the microphone. But anyway, very loose. Uh, so apparently that's one of the problems with some Parker IMs. They're inconsistent, so some of them are just fine. Some have that problem. Another problem with uh, the Parker IM, you'll notice on a lot of vintage pens, and new pens have it too, but it's better hidden, they'll have these little holes. That's so when you go to uncap the pen, you don't go and suck the ink out into your cap. A lot of Parkers hide that a little more cleverly, like this 51. You don't see that on the cap anywhere. Except it's there, because it's got to be. It's a slip cap. It's hidden there, underneath the clip. And uh, apparently on the Parker IM, that's bigger than it needs to be. I, I posted a link to a blog entry that talks about that repair, where they just cover it with a little bit of tape. So uh, that's part of why apparently the Parker IM dries out. And then apparently sometimes the Parker IM is a much nicer pen if you clean it. Who knew? So uh, anyway, I hope I was able to help this gentleman out. And uh, it was kind of interesting to have a little information then be able to do some research and get some more. So, and have somebody appeal to me as an expert on fountain pens because I'm definitely not that. Anyway, let's talk about some other stuff. All right, so uh, first thing, I'm going to just get this out of the way. Rant. I wish I swore stronger on this channel because <laughs> I flip and hate this remote control for this new camera. Love the camera. I did a video for my freshman physical science class. I filmed three labs. I did them myself. Um, edited, it, edited it down to two minutes with that camera. Footage turned out great. The close-ups were great. Everything was great. Um, but I didn't need to use the remote control. Now I'm trying to do me. My, I, I, I want to throw the camera through the wall because I hate this remote control. Uh, I at first time I tried filming, it had all my settings screwed up. So I was like in the dark, even though I've got all these lights shining in my face. Um, I don't know how I fixed it, but I fixed it somehow. But I still can't control exposure, ISO, zooming, speed, anything. I'm not thrilled about that. So that's a big disappointment with this Leica. 
really hope they come out with an update to the software, because ick, that's awful. That right there is almost enough to make me wish I'd gone with the Panasonic version instead, because even though there were some settings I couldn't control there, I could control a few of them. So, uh, yeah. But, on a happier note, uh, okay, not on a happier note, sorry, on a note, <laughs> uh, I saw that Kyona Oto is coming out with uh, two new inks. I used uh, Sakura Nozumi tonight. Uh, the two new inks, I don't remember their name, but I gave you a link to a Fountain Pen Network entry about them. And uh, I was very excited because that's one of my few exceptions to no new inks. Until I found out that they're sparkling inks. Oh, sorry. Shimmering inks. So, I don't mind shimmering inks. I think they can look cool. But they wear out their welcome very quickly with me. Because if the, as they sit in the pen, the sparkles settle out. And you have to shake the pen. Uh, you let the pen sit overnight. Then they start clogging the feed and filling it up. And then you get these big glops of, of sparkle and then nothing, nothing, nothing. And then you clean the pen out when you're finally just can't take it anymore. And then the next thing you fill into it, no matter what, how good a job you did, is sparkly. So, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. So I think they've cured my addiction to Kyona Oto. Kyona Oto did it all by themselves, so... For better or for worse, there it is. Uh, in other news, the cell phone battery is about to die, so uh, we'll move on. Uh, I did finally do a new trailer for the channel. I called it uh, the Badlands Pen Club instead of trailer. I, I'll tell you why. I did a, uh, one Saturday morning, I had just gotten out of bed and just turned on uh, YouTube for some reason, and... Pierre Gustafson was doing a live stream, so I thought I joined in and uh, I commented. Well, it turned out he was using the StreamYard, which is a piece of software I'm interested in trying, just haven't yet. And uh, so suddenly I found myself, I haven't even showered, brushed my teeth, had my coffee or anything yet. I hadn't even combed my hair. Uh, I'm suddenly there on camera talking to a viewer of mine who was also watching the live stream and uh, trying to make sense when I'd barely woken up. But anyway, um, where was I headed with that? Oh, yeah. Um, I really don't know where I was headed with that. I'm sorry. It is now 843 because this is the second time I filmed this because I realized once again, messing with the camera, I forgot to turn on the microphone. So I thought, hey, I'll do it again. So, here I am. But anyway, uh, don't know where I was headed with that. But, on a happier note, I did, finally did a Dark-style trailer. Now, Dark is a German TV series, which is very interesting. I may put a link in my video description. It's not there right now. But, oh! Yeah, I, now I remember why I brought up Pierre Gustafson. <laughs> 8 o'clock at night. I, whoo! Um, anyway, I... Uh, I, I on the live stream I called myself Badlands Pen Club on that StreamYard thing, and that was just to uh, kind of as a joke. Um, I guess if we ever start a fountain pen club here where I live, we're close to the Badlands, and a lot of things are called Badlands Auto Club, Badlands Auto Body, Badlands Music, you know, whatever. Um, I figured we'd probably be called the Badlands Pen Club. So. Uh, Anyway, that's why I called the, the uh, trailer Badlands Pen Club. Um, I think I'm the only member unless we recruit from out of the area. But anyway, I, I was kind of happy with how it turned out. If you've ever watched Dark, the uh, opening credits take advantage of mirror images. And then you see things disappear into themselves when it's really just one finger, but it's disappearing into the mirror image of itself. Uh, it's just kind of a neat effect, very eerie. I wasn't going for eerie, I just, I was hoping to make it light and happy, so I picked happy looking pens. And, you know, of course my, uh, pens in use music is fairly happy. So, uh, that's what I did. So I was reasonably happy with it. It's a little long for a trailer. Um, I don't know if it really gives you an idea what the channel's all about, but I had fun making it. I've been planning to make it for months, and I finally did it, so... Yeah, I'm happy. So, uh, moving on, because i got to beat the battery on the cell phone. 
Uh, it has been a cold week. Uh, we had, uh, we've had minus 15, and of course up north it's much colder in the state. But uh, minus 15 Fahrenheit is pretty darn cold. We just haven't had the snow to go with it. So I'm hoping, now that we've had the cold to make it finally feel like winter, I'm hoping we get the snow to make it feel like winter. Uh, because uh, we count on the snow for moisture, for spring crops, uh, for the ranchers, for my garden, for my lawn. I guess I don't care about my lawn too much, let it turn brown and die. But uh, I like my garden, and I I know a lot of ranchers and farmers who depend on it too. So, yeah, I'm hoping we get some snow yet to add moisture to the ground. Uh, in less good news... Very definitely less good news. The North Dakota State Senate has passed a bill to allow schools to post the Ten Commandments. Never mind that lots of courts have said, Oh, no, 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 you cannot do that. Because that's endorsing a religion. Just think about this. Post the Ten Commandments. Which ones? We're going to do the Catholic version, the Protestant version, the Jewish version. The Muslim version? Okay, it's North Dakota, so I guess the last two options are out. But uh, whatever version we post, that's a sign to the other that you aren't welcome here. And what about our non-religious students, our agnostic students who just don't care about religion? What about our atheist students? What about our students who are Buddhist, Muslim, uh, think of any religion under the sun? Be signed to all them you are not welcome and really how much do the ten commandments apply to us all thou shalt have no other gods before me well that doesn't apply to you if you're an atheist uh and a lot of the commandments i mean are that many of our high school students married that they need to worry about the commandment on adultery I don't think so. Uh, and a lot of the commandments really aren't even uh, related to law. So, thou shalt not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I don't think kids need that one either. So, uh, I am very disappointed that our Senate passed it. Of course, these things get passed partly by uh, people trying to appease their voters and not that they expect it to go anywhere. They're just, uh, oh, I, I pushed for God in, in our schools. and Yeah, right on. But uh, yeah, the Senate passed it. So I'm hoping that our House of Representatives sees better sense. And failing that, I hope our governor sees better sense because it's a big mistake and a world of lawsuits just waiting to happen. Um, there's another one which I don't know as much about, so I'm uh, not going to comment too deeply, but there's another one, another bill that's out there about transgender athletes that I think could get this state in some trouble. But again, I need to research that one, so that's why I'm not going to comment too deeply on that one this week. Um, and then finally, uh, I'll just mention that on the topic of the Ten Commandments, I did a video a while back doing a deep dive into the Ten Commandments. Uh, I talk about the Catholic and the Protestant versions. And I talk about the fact that, hey, Exodus, uh, Exodus 34 has a whole list of Ten Commandments that the Bible actually calls the Ten Commandments that are quite a bit different from the ones we typically think of as the Ten Commandments. Uh, so, anyway, it's just kind of scary. The, uh, okay, another scary message about my battery. Uh, the, I don't want to see us become like the state to our south where some of this craziness has gotten through the legislature. And, of course, their governor's kind of nutty. Um, you know, this is a state to the south of us where they have posted in God we trust in all their schools. Uh, never mind that a lot of their students don't trust in any God at all, but it's on the money. Maybe I should do a video on in God we trust. Uh, a lot of people have done it better than I could, but you know, in God we trust really didn't become a national model of any kind until the 1950s. 
as part of our anti-communist propaganda where we're we ain't no godless commies we're christians um never mind that we've had a lot of fighting amongst ourselves what christian actually means but uh or whether that's a good thing to be christian you know that that's also in the 1950s when one nation under god was added to our pledge so that might be a topic for a driving video so anyway um another scary message so i think the battery is like this close to dying so i better quit so if videos like this interest you where i talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points i would invite you to subscribe and i guess i just mentioned some controversial driving video topics is there a driving video topic you would like me to see especially uh you know maybe one related to north dakota uh controversial topics i kind of pick because it has to be something i'm passionate about um Sometimes these are the driving videos are the ones that get people really riled up and make it fun. So uh, anyway, let us know down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.